Good morning, beekeeping family. It is Sunday, May 15th, and I'm out here going to work these hives. Right now, I've only got two going. I wanna check in them, see what's going on, see if they're ready for swarming. Also, hopefully do some a couple splits, one out of each one. Let's see what we got. You're not the star of this one, Wendy. Back to the bees. Here's the mouth of the first one we're gonna do, this top bar. Always wanna check what they're doing at the front. I don't see a lot of pollen. Oh, there's some pollen going in. But without pollen, it means they're bringing in a lot of nectar, and that is good. Oh, there's some more pollen. Let's get inside. Doing my best with this camera angle. I have the top bar set up over here. Let's see what we have. I will glove up if they seem angry or perturbed. A lot of time breaking this really old propolis makes a loud snap and the bees don't like that. Also may have some of this attached to the wall which will make an additional mess. So I'll break this back one first. Definitely some comb attached to this. You can hear it kind of cracking. Got bees all the way to the very back, which is a sign they have a good population. You can already kind of see the way this comb is going, and we definitely have some cross combing. You can also hear them in there buzzing. Oh, yeah. All right, so with this cross combing, I'm just gonna slightly go up a few. Try to find where it starts. And if I can find where it starts, I'm just gonna move all that over together. Ooh, it's going way up there. Ooh, yeah. You can see this knife bending. You can see the strength of this propolis. Alright, this goes up too much. So, what I'm gonna do. It's definitely better to get this done now than when it is hot, super hot, and this comb is malleable. Because then it will be breaking everywhere. Also making sure past videos, there's no scorpions right underneath the side of this. I can feel the anger. Ooh. Already have capped honey. Could have been from last year. Maybe not. Just gonna move that straight over. Do a split, want them to have a little bit of food. I regret moving that camera. Mm -hmm. but that is what I'm seeing back here. Capped honey. Which it's early, so it has to be last year's. Cross combing isn't too bad. It's just a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna keep going. I'll actually kind of break that. It's just on the corners. So I'm just gonna break it off these corners. The one behind it might be able to straighten it out a little bit. Hey, girl. Good job. I don't know. Just checking me out. I'm checking you out. If you can see that, that is kind of what happens with cross combing. That's what happens when you don't manage a top bar hive correctly. What I'm doing is I'm just cutting the sides to correct this cross combing. Just disconnecting one bar from the other. 
tempting to me. When you hear that big buzz, that means just let them settle for a second before you start pulling stuff away. That is what happens when it's only attached in the very center. I'm more than happy to show my mistakes with my successes. So you can see that it's just broke off. It's attached to the sides, so it's still kind of suspended there, but it is honey. I'm just gonna pull that out. They're bringing enough nectar and pollen this time in spring, so they don't necessarily need that. Let me go get a container. Did just do the 100 yard dash to the house. Try to get everything, or try to get the pitcher so the bees aren't <laughs> exposed. Even as, during robbing season, I would never open them up when there's no nectar being brought in. But this time of year, I don't even want to leave it open for an extended amount of time. Give any other neighbors excuses to come over and help themselves to what they want. Oh, that smells so good. There it is. Like I said, if it was hot, <laughs> there's no way that I would have been able to do that. See if I can get the ladies off without them trying to kill me. Oh yeah, they hate the brush. They hate it. Sometimes as fast as you get them off, they go back on. What I have is a, <laughs> a tea pitcher. So it does have a little spout. Let's see if they naturally leave that like they should. All right, continuing on. Hopefully they will try to fly out and then not be able to get back in. Again, that's why a lot of people don't like top bar hives or talk negatively about them. But if you manage it actively, you can basically not have this problem. All right, so we're getting into what's <laughs> kind of the or origin of the problem. This looks like the last cross combing, at least as of now. Next, we're getting into some straight stuff. So let's see what we can do with this. Mm. What I'll probably do is I'll put this, because it's not too bad, in the middle of two straight ones, and they'll fix it. Oh, here we go. On a much better stuff. Ooh. Getting into the population too. Definitely, when I broke that, I heard some buzzing. And it's lighter. Lighter's good. Means they're not storing and they could be laying. So, already gonna start looking for the queen. It's possible she may be back here. Looking for queen cups especially. Uh, looking for eggs or larvae. Looking for pollen stores. necessarily see any of that always curious these clusters that they make what they're doing in that cluster yeah I don't see anything yeah it looks like they're probably just storing honey so put this back population wise they're not what I thought they would be but I'm still happy with this turnout all right looks like we got more honey. You can tell that's capped honey because it's dark. Kind of, and they take the wax and just kind of plop it over. You can almost see the honey underneath it. So when there's honey in the middle, you know there's probably not brood because usually they do brood in the middle and honey on the outside. So 
I'm actually gonna put this, I'm still confident I wanna do a split just to get ahead of things. So I'm gonna put that over there so they have food. Right. Always if it doesn't, with the top bar, a Kenyan like this, if it doesn't feel like it's coming out, it's probably attached to the sides. So you definitely wanna take care of those sides first. There is the queen. You can see her. It's right there. Pretty easy to spot. Healthy. That's good. That, there's a lot of honey in the middle, so maybe that takes back what I said. But I do see some pollen around this side. <laughs> the problem is in the middle, those are bigger combs, you can tell. Bigger uh, holes. So that's probably going to be brood or drone brood. Separate it back here. Queen is in there. Let's see how good of a layer she is. Not checking on this last year. I don't know if it swarmed or not. So I don't know if that's a new queen or old queen. Good things to take note of. Easy. But with her. Let them settle. With her all the way that far back, that's a good indication that there should be a good amount of brood laid. All right. Also, a lot of people talk about brood pattern. This time of the year, it's hard to tell because some of those cells, this for instance, some might have hatched out. Uh, others are laid in. They kind of lay as they pull the honey out of there. Um, she could be laying in there so the brood pattern is kind of maybe more opportunistic but if you can see on the bottom those are drone cells because they're poked out that is regular uh, worker bee larva worker bee cells uh, if you can get a little side view of them those have a little oh, and they're a little feisty the wind just started to blow a little bit and they never like that all right so i'm going to put this one because i want to make sure they have it put this one right back in here Still looking for that split. Getting into a good amount of population. They're not super feisty. They are bouncing off my hands a little bit. I'm definitely trying to hold on to these uh, combs well in case they sting me. I don't want to get surprised and drop them. Again, this time of year, we're looking for queen cells. See in the middle that they do have some pollen. Lots of cells around there. Capped worker brood. See this other side. Actually a good, a good population on this. Definitely don't see any queen cells. This time of year when they're swarming, the queen cells will all be on the outside and not in the middle. That's back. I'm squishy ladies. All right. If I find some that are, that have queen cells, I might use those for the split. But so far, not yet. So I don't even think this one's getting ready to swarm. I think I can still mitigate them swarming. Uh, no queen cells. Pretty good amount of worker brood. Sorry if there's a shadow. It's kind of hard to get away from it. Filming on a tripod. The population again at the top. Let me try to curve it up top if you can see yellow that is pollen and there's some nectar stored up there nectar is just honey that hasn't been dehydrated yet one way to look at it all right good thing is <laughs> you always want to put them back in the same orientation and <laughs> with top bars they all tend to have kind of a uh, 
uh, like an indicator where the combs fat around the side so they fit back together like puzzle pieces. I can tell even by flipping that, that it's getting lighter. Lighter with these combs mean it is uh, more likely to just be brewed. Honey and nectar is very heavy. Okay, lots of brood coming out. Remember, that's, uh, that's a good sign that this much brood's coming out. Uh, without these queen cells, that's a good sign that they're doing what they need to do and they, the queen and the, or the bees still think that they have plenty of room. So I can put some empty combs in the middle of this and they'll keep on trucking. All right, so I put a couple combs of brood in here along with some honey and pollen. This, I sealed it up. I didn't put any space in between. I left the old queen in here going to do something a little unorthodox and that is move this nuke to this location and move the full one with the queen over there so all the returning bees will also come back to this little nuke box I have and strengthen it up also with no queen cells I just want to give them as most the best chance that they have so that's the plan plus I eventually want to move all these over there anyway things that are way easier than they should have been uh, besides the top bar being super heavy, uh, got them out. Here's the returning ones coming around saying, hey, is this the right place? And they'll eventually pick up the address. That one's empty, so they're not going to hang out in there. And they'll go in there. These new ones, uh, where the old queen is, I'm going to seal up that hole. So in a day or so when they get out, they will reorient themselves right back to here. Everything will be good. Let's do the Langstroth. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to put all of this on video, but I am going to move those. I'll give you updates in between if there's something cool. Uh, my phone is already overheating in March. Here is that top bar nuke I put over here, and you can see they're kind of reorienting to it. And a lot of foragers are returning. This isn't quite an orientation flight in the afternoon. It's only like 10 or 11 in the morning. So it's still pretty cool. Lots of bees there. Trying to figure things out onto this monster that is falling apart. All right, I did kind of finish them up, at least what I'm doing today. Uh, I only brought out two of the deeps, thinking that there's a lot of empty space in that hive. There was no empty space in the hive. There was comb everywhere, honey everywhere. Had to do a little honey harvest impromptu, uh, which is in one of those. Uh, I also could tell that the bees had just had enough and I did not get to replace this bottom box that's rotting. I'll do that in a couple weeks. I did not for sure find the queen. I didn't even open up or take apart this medium there. Pretty sure she was in there because there was brood on top and on bottom. And look at that medium. That is crazy. I do have other mediums. I'll move that too. Uh, it's growing fungus. Uh, so that's kind of where I got today. I'm actually not too upset with it. Strong colony it was super strong bees everywhere there's a bunch of bees in there where i think the queen is there was a ton of bees in there brood there were queen cups i looked in a lot of the queen cups and did not find any larvae inside of them but i could been could be wrong so definitely queen cups and larvae they can make their own queen either both both hive from what i could tell even in that bottom box there's larvae so awesome hives it's pretty crazy considering I haven't worked these in two years. Which brings me to a couple conclusions. One is they're really nice bees because I haven't worked them in so long and they're still not stingy. I w didn't have gloves on the whole time and did get stung. I did use smoke on the bigger hive and was very cautious how I moved with them. Also, I didn't see any deformed wing virus, which is a big indicator of uh, Varroa mites. So for not treating them in a couple years, it's pretty cool. I never, it wasn't my intent to have treatment-free bees, but maybe they are, you know, going along that path. Also, it's not heavily populated, which I know there's only two hives here. Several of my neighbors in the neighborhood have bees, but I don't think it's an overpopulation like you see 
moving bees around, taking on alm almond groves or orange groves and things like that. But all in all, it was uh, a lot of work and I'm excited for what this year is gonna bring. Next video might be looking in a couple weeks to see if those hives took on a new queen. So hopefully it happens. Thank you all for watching. Love y'all. See y'all next video.